what is up guys thank you for watching another video today today i'm going to be making a video that i've been actually trying to do for a while now um i haven't had a time to do it and today's fun of the day where i'm actually able to do a full exhaust install on both uh cars both the evil swapped eclipse and the 428 clips um i do want to show you guys the difference between the exhaust on the turbo 4g6 three models on the eclipses and the non-turbo 420a's um obviously they're different diameters different sizes different looks um different noises different performance increases um stuff like that so i'm actually going to go over all that with you guys so that when you do an exhaust install on your mitsubishi eclipse you're prepared um you know what to expect and you know how to do it basically so i'm going to go ahead and pop out the hood on both of them and then we'll continue on all right so both hoods are open as you can see we have the evo 8 4g6 three in here and we have the hated um, stock 420A um, non-turbo model. As you can tell, this thing's like completely nasty and dirty. It's all stock. And well, this one's been swapped, so. But this car did originally start with one of those. It's completely different now, so I'm actually gonna show you guys the difference. So basically the difference, the main difference in exhaust when it comes to a turbo and non-turbo model is um, basically you have what the turbo, the whole turbo setup here, um, in a non-turbo model, you don't have like the O2 housing here. Um, you basically just have what, um, the exhaust manifold or what many people call the headers. Um, and it just connects just straight to the, uh, the downpipe as you guys can see right here. So the exhaust manifold's right here and it connects straight to the downpipe down there. Um, there's no turbo, there's no O2 housing, all that stuff. So that makes a huge difference in noise, obviously. Um, a lot of 420A guys, for some reason, like to upgrade their um, exhaust manifold or headers. Um, which I'm very against, uh, and this is because, um, honestly, the 420 Eclipses, when they're not boosted, and you put an exhaust on them, they basically sound a little bit ricey. Um, this is just a four-cylinder with a big exhaust on it, and you want to be really careful. Uh, once we do the exhaust install on this car today, I'm going to make sure that um, hopefully it doesn't sound bad, because we are putting uh, what we consider an axle back on it. Uh, but I mean you have to be really careful when you're doing an exhaust install on this all you really need honestly for a 420a um, is either just the muffler just the tip honestly because even with a full exhaust you're not going to get too much power increase on an on turbo um, so either just the tip at most the cap back but you definitely do not want to straight pipe these because trust me when they're straight piped they sound extremely horrible um you basically you sound like a honda and honestly no one likes to hear that um everyone next to you does not think you're cool they think you're annoying uh, so if you're gonna do an exhaust install on this car um honestly leave this all stock um do not straight pipe it all you really need is either a muffler or a cat bag because realistically you're only going to gain a couple horsepower and obviously it's not going to make a big difference um, when it comes to turbo cars like the evos or the turbo dsms a different story um, you could actually you know do the whole thing you could do the exhaust manifold you could change out the o2 housing you get a, a bigger downpipe and then straight pipe the car all the way to the back um, because once you have forced induction um, you actually need less back pressure um, and once you upgrade the piping to a bigger diameter you actually get a power increase so it's always beneficial to do that with these cars um, so with these type of cars, turbo cars, I would recommend going with a 3 inch diameter exhaust, either a cap back, muffler, straight pipe, you know, whatever you want to get. And I do recommend going with brand names, um, I'm talking like HKS, I've seen it's like the best exhaust for this. I've seen the Apexi N1s, I've seen the Thermal R&Ds, um, they're usually the best for the turbo models. When it comes to turbo, uh, non-turbo models, um, I know a lot of guys like to go on eBay and get like the no names. All right, so I went ahead and took them all out of the trunk of this 2G. Um, right here we have a gritty trust exhaust that um, David at Monroe, the alignment, actually gave to us. This is actually meant for a GSX, um, which I plan on putting on. I'm not too sure. If it looks good, I'm actually going to leave it on the Evo Swapped Eclipse. If not, I'll probably put it on there. Just leave it on with a muffler. Um, if not, um, I mean, this is the uh, exhaust that this car used to have for a minute. It used to have a Megan Racing Catback back when it was a non-turbo. Um, eventually I went three inch so I actually got this no name um, I'll actually put a picture of how it looked like um, but as you can see the difference between the um, RS GS and GSC exhaust versus the GSX exhaust is that the GSX exhaust is actually shorter um, there are different um, in tubing because you have to go around the rear all-wheel drive subframe and the gassing and all that stuff so um, you could actually put a full GSC exhaust on a non-turbo car it would actually bolt up um, just fine uh, i think for the piping the stock piping um, non-turbos come with two inch piping stock 
and then I think the GSTs actually come with a 2.25 which is a nice little upgrade. A lot of guys actually upgrade uh, the stock GST exhaust on the non-turbo cars like these. Um, the way you can tell is basically um, the non-turbo actually just have one little tip right there and the GST and GSX's actually have a dual tip set up right there. Um, Anyways, we're going to be getting rid of this ugly stock exhaust and as you can see this car has not had a exhaust for a minute um, ever since we swapped it so um, we're going to put something on today hopefully it looks really good with the gritty exhaust because I actually want to keep it on this car um, but anyways first we're actually going to go ahead and check up this car um, and then put the gritty exhaust see if it looks good and if it does we'll keep it and move on to removing the stock exhaust off of the non-turbo Eclipse and putting on the, the no-name 3-inch uh, exhaust and see how it sounds. Alright, so when you're jacking up the car, I'm actually used to having no bumper on this car. Just make sure you're careful not to... <laughs> look at this. Oh my god, I'm so close to like breaking this thing. Like It's literally on the ground and any more pressure would have literally cracked it. So be really careful if you have a bumper on and a lip. Um, make sure you remove it beforehand. I got really lucky I stopped just in time. I went ahead and brought the Grady muffler out here. As you can see, it comes out in three hangers. Um, for the muffler, it should be pretty similar. Um, honestly, it's just three hangers. Um, I know the Eclipse was actually missing one right there, but as you can see, one is right here, the second one is right above the sway bar, and you got the third one right there. So you literally just gotta make sure you uh, attach it well enough to the point where it's not gonna freaking shake and all that stuff. And uh, um, it's obviously easier if you have two people, um, but since I'm by myself, I'm probably gonna end up using a jack to like jack it up there and then, I don't know, I'll figure it out, but let's install it real quick, see how it looks, and if it looks good, um, I mean, we'll probably just keep it on this car. If not, we'll just go ahead and slap it on that one. And just like that, I pretty much got the exhaust on. Now that I'm looking at it, it actually looks pretty sick. I mean, it's just, it gives it like that 90s vibe, like the early 2000s where it's like a big muffler. Um, honestly, it wasn't even that hard to install since it is just the muffler. Um, I'll show you right here. It's just, of course, a little hanger right here and two hangers in the back. As you guys can see, I have no exhaust whatsoever. So we're either gonna have to make a custom one due to the drive shaft or maybe a GSX one might fit. But right now it's literally just an open O2. I don't even have the downpipe on it, so this thing sounds crazy loud. It sounds really good though because it's boosted, but I mean, at least the muffler's on now. I really like it at this point. I'm actually gonna take it off the jack, um, to the jack stand, so actually see what it looks like um, on the ground. And then after that, we could actually start moving towards um, the GS. Uh, this will actually have to remove the, um, the OEM one, which I think it's like two or three bolts, um, and then actually go ahead and install the little axle back that's like right there. All right, so now getting down here, I'm gonna show you guys what the stock RS, GS, and GST setup looks like. Um, you have the same three hangers um, as the previous one from the other Eclipse, and you basically, all you need to do is unbolt it from here. There's three bolts, two on this side and one on the other side. I'm probably gonna get some PB Blaster to go ahead and, uh, cause these things look pretty rusted, so. And as you can see, it's pretty much a full on like stock exhaust. You can see the cat up there. It looks like the stock hangers here are actually held on by what looks like 12 millimeter bolts. Uh, you basically loosen them. I know it's hard to see in the camera, but remember if it's remember it was three of them. So it's one, two, and the one in the front. You basically loosen it from this end right here, and then you just pop the uh, full exhaust back out. And it does feed above the subframe. The difference between the front wheel drive setup and the all wheel drive one, if you guys remember, the all wheel drive setup is like a completely different whole rear end. Um, you go under uh, the subframe, so that's the difference from the front wheel drive and all wheel drive setup for exhaust. That's why they're both different. All right, so this has become literally the most annoying part of the whole install. Um, I cannot seem to get the stupid little thing through the subframe, so I'm actually just gonna sand it and cut it. Honestly, I don't see myself going back to a stock exhaust. If you are, just you know, wiggle it until it comes out, but I'm not here to waste time, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it. Um, put it to the side and then go ahead and start on the inside. Anyways, right before I start on this, um, if you are going to cut it just like I did, make sure you wear safety glasses and gloves because you do not want to cut yourself or get something in your eyes. Safety is very important. Um, you know, I've just heard too many horror stories. I know sometimes I don't even do it myself, but you know, if you care for your hands, you care for your eyes, just make sure you use, you know, safety goggles are like two bucks a dollar. So, you know, they're worth your eyes. So I'm going to cut it real quick and we'll be right back. All right, so the stock exhaust is off. This was a huge pain in the butt, honestly. Not worth it. Um, I went ahead and pretty much installed the other exhaust in reverse order. You just put it on the hangers. You adjust it to make sure, you know, it looks kind of good. 
and it's off of Jack Sands. As you can see, the difference between a no name and a brand name. The brand name fits perfect without any modifications, and the no name exhaust. Well, <laughs> you'd be the guess. I think it looks retarded. Um, it was on this car previously, but again, it was modified to make it fit according to the car. This is just like fitting it just how it's supposed to. And I really don't like it. I think it looks a little bit ricer, but we haven't even started it to be honest. I don't even know what it's gonna sound like. I know that one sounds good. We might even start up this one in a bit, just so you guys can tell the difference between both. Uh, we are gonna take this on a test drive, see how it sounds like during drive-bys from the inside and like the cold starts. So let's start off with this one real quick and let's see how it sounds. you guys sit here um, let's see how it sounds out with a drive-by a little uh, flybys hopefully it doesn't sound too bad <laughs> So I'm so used to the evil that this thing sounds hideous to me. Obviously when I used to have like a 428 with a silver one, I thought it sounded super sick, but this thing definitely needs some boost, some turbo, uh, just to make it sound better. But I mean, let me know what you guys think. Honestly, I'm not a big fan on the exhaust on 428s, but I mean, it'll do for now. Um, it's not extremely horrible. It doesn't sound completely like a Civic. So that's a good thing. So let's head out of here. All right guys, so that was pretty much it for the pools. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the full exhaust install on both the Evo Swap Eclipse and the 420A Eclipse. Uh, stay tuned because there will be more videos coming up. Basically the Evo, both the SMs, maybe future builds as well. Um, and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Oh, I